Hi, my name's Hexadecimal, and I've been playing League since Season 2. That's over 10 years. And in that span, I've hit Challenger multiple times as a mid lane main. However, several years ago, I switched to jungle as my main role. I know, disgusting, I hate myself too. And so, with such a long break since I last played mid lane, the team here at Skillcap came up with an idea. They would send me back into mid with a challenge, take an unranked account to Diamond in less than 30 days. Then, at the end of it, I would teach you guys, the viewers, the most important lessons I learned during the climb. Well, here's what absolutely blew my mind. The same strategy I used all the way back in Season 2 was still winning me lane in Season 13 against players all the way from Silver to Diamond. In fact, it became very clear that this was the one most important lesson to teach you guys. And so, that's how this guide came to be. You'll be learning the one most important thing from my climb from unranked to diamond. And by the way, that's actually what we specialize in at skillcap.com. We take the most effective strategies for climbing and simplify them so they're easy to learn. Take our course on mid lane macro. We teach you how to roam, how to use lane priority, the best warding locations, and so much more. Players just like you are leaving five-star reviews raving about how this course actually helped them climb. Or maybe what you're really struggling with is mid lane matchups. Well, we got you covered with an entire course teaching you how to play every single matchup in mid lane. Skullcapped users absolutely love this course and you will too. Still don't believe us? Well, the best part is it's completely risk free to try us out as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. If you don't significantly improve while actively using Skillcapped, then you get your money back. No questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. All right, now, before we get into the one most important thing I've learned from my climb, I need to address something very important about mid lane. A lot of players mistakenly imagine mid lane as these two control mages duking it out. Maybe once upon a time that was the case, but nowadays melee assassins are by far the most prevalent matchup you're going to face. For example, on the current patch of making this video, you can see four out of the top five most picked mid laners are actually melee assassins. These four picks alone make up 34.1% of your games, so more than a third. What's really crazy though is if you go down the entire list of mid lane champions and calculate the total pick rate of melee mid laners, 79.8% of the time you'll be facing a melee champion. That's 8 out of 10 games you play. And so, not only would learning melee matchups give you the most bang for your buck, but what I learned from my climb to diamond was that players would repeatedly lose lane to me in the first few levels when I played melee champions. Compare that to when I would play a ranged champion, often things would go much more even and stable in the early game. And so, with that out of the way, let's jump into this strategy. In this game, I'm playing Fizz against a Platinum 2 Rise. And this guy wasn't a noob, he's a Rise main with an impressive win rate, and yet he's still going to fall for the most basic mistake you guys are making into melee champions. Alright, and so to start the lane, we're in a melee versus ranged matchup. The game plan is simple, the melee champion is going to want to play passive and let the ranged champion push to them. This is because if you try to fight against the push as a melee into ranged at level 1, they're just going to harass you down with their ranged auto attacks and abilities, resulting in you pretty much immediately losing your lane. So as the melee, your goal is to not take any damage, only go for CS if you'll take very little harass in the process. You can see that's exactly what I'm doing as Fizz, and it goes as far as having to give up some minions to conserve my health. Eventually the wave crashes, and this will cause what's known as a rebound. See how my minions get stuck on the enemy minions under my tower? Well, this keeps my minions stuck and will cause the enemy's incoming wave to push way further up the lane. And as you can see, it results in the minion wave to be right outside of my tower. On top of this, the wave will be even in minions, meaning the ranged champion no longer has any kind of push or minion advantage. We're now even. It's this exact moment where I pretty much win my lane every single time. Off this rebound, I'll look to trade very aggressively. It won't matter if I slightly lose the trade or not. I just need to get the enemy low on health. And this is very important for you to understand. This is because as the melee assassin, you will have more burst in your kit. It will give you a larger kill threshold. So for example, if I get rise to around 40% health, I know that I can burst him to zero health if I have all of my abilities such as Q, W, E, along with ignite. I want you to compare that to rise's kill threshold on me, which is much lower as he has teleport instead of ignite and he doesn't have as much upfront burst. He needs time to chain his abilities. So that's exactly what I want to do. I want to engage with the intention of getting him within my kill threshold. You can see how the initial trade is successful in accomplishing that, and so I can quickly re-engage to get first blood. Now, I know many of you are going to point out that Ryze got ganked prior to this happening, and don't worry, I have plenty more examples to show this working without any ganks. I just want this first lesson to have a very simple takeaway though. It's that melee champions don't care about trading the same way ranged champions do. It doesn't matter if you win or lose trades, what matters is if you're within the melee champion's kill threshold. 
So if we go back before I engage Sunrise, I want you to imagine a circle around Fizz. His Q range represents his range of engage, which is 550. As the range champion, you should never be inside this range. Instead, your goal should be to use your range advantage. In this case, Ryze's Q range is 1000. And so he should be moving back and throwing a Q at Fizz to land free damage. Essentially, your general goal as the range champion should be to not take any kind of straight up trade and instead land harass from safety. So with that in your mind, let's jump into the next example. Here I'm playing Fizz against a Diamond Annie main. We want to follow the same game plan, just sitting back avoiding damage while we pick up what CS we can safely and wait for the wave to crash and then rebound. So now that the wave has crashed, you can see my wave gets stuck on the enemies under my tower and the rebound has started. Annie and I are both level 2, and so I see a chance to engage by dodging her Q to take a good trade. You can see, even by timing this trade well, I still end up slightly losing it, and from Annie's perspective, she probably thinks that this was all good. However, you know better now, and you'll see instead, I'm just waiting to hit level 3 so I'm the same level as her, and then I immediately jump in when she's within my Q range and run her down the lane, forcing her flash. Not only that, but she's now so low on health, she has to take a bad recall timing, so I can just shove the wave into her tower, causing her to lose a ton of gold and experience. Basically, I just won my lane in the first three levels once again. Now, the main lesson I want you to take away from this replay is that the range champion often will get lulled into a false sense of confidence. This is due to them having such a huge advantage at level 1. However, once the rebound happens, it evens out the minions, which means the melee champion is now the same level as the range champion. You can see I was able to go for a trade when we were both level 2, and additionally at level 3 champions get access to all three of their base abilities, which is a big deal for melee champions as often they need all three of their abilities to make up for the range disadvantage, and so become much more of a threat. Alright, now in this next replay, I face an Aurelian Soul who's Platinum 3 with an 80% win rate on his champion. And surprise surprise, lane starts out the exact same, play safe, minimize harass, and pick up what CS I can while I wait for the next wave to rebound. Now, for this example, there's an important takeaway I want you to learn. And that's, when a wave rebounds off the tower, it's always going to push in the opposite direction. And this can be due to two reasons. The first will be because the wave sits under the tower long enough for the next enemy wave to actually get within your tower range. This will cause a massive minion advantage due to your tower killing that following wave. As you can see here, I have 6 minions to 3, so it's pushing to Aurelian Soul. However, this doesn't always happen. For example, in the previous Rise replay, you'll notice this wasn't the case. The wave ended up being exactly even in minions outside of my tower. The reason this happens is that an enemy pushes too fast. For example, you can see Rise crash the wave into my tower only after two waves. This means they don't build up a big enough wave to buy time for their next wave to move under our tower. When you see a wave state like this after a rebound, where it's outside of the tower and there's an even number of minions, this is what's called the even minion rule, and it will still push to the enemy laner. This is because the wave is much closer to my tower, and this results in my next incoming wave to arrive sooner and start damaging the wave much earlier than the enemy's incoming wave. This is what causes it to push. So let's jump back to the Aurelian Soul replay to find out why understanding this is so important. So, we waited for the wave to crash, and now it's rebounding back to the enemy. Notice how, since it's rebounding back, I have the minion advantage, so I actually hit level 4 first. Again, as you know, we want to look for aggressive trades here to set up our kill. We're able to successfully get Aurelian Soul low, and now we just last it, waiting for our cooldowns to come back up so we can set up our next trade or potential all-in. Fortunately for us, we do get a jungle gank that basically represents what would have been a second trade. And here is why playing aggressive as the melee when it rebounds like this is so valuable. Notice how much of a wave I have built up. If Aurelian Soul recalls, I can shove the wave into the tower and cause them to lose a ton of minions while setting up my own recall timing. So, often players will stay, baited by this big wave, which sets you up to tower dive them as you can see here. In this case, Aurelian Soul took teleport and so was able to prevent losing an insane amount of minions after their death. However, do take note of how by crashing that big wave, I'm able to set up my own recall timing regardless. This means I can get back to lane in time to pick up the wave and lose very few minions. Here's what you need to take away. Not only does the rebound result in the range champion initially being pushed up the lane vulnerable, and then also then gives us a minion lead resulting in us either being even in levels or ahead, but the rebound will also result in a slow push back towards the enemy, which means we can go aggressive as no matter what, we can just take a recall timing off the crash. Think of it as a get out of jail free card. Here is what's really valuable though. All of what you just learned also applies to melee versus melee matchups. Here I'm facing a Platinum 4 Aurelia main as Fizz. So, you know how in the ranged matchup we had to just concede the push because they're always stronger than melee champions at level 1? Well, in the melee matchups, the same dynamic can occur, where one player has the advantage level 1 and that player will then secure the push. In this case, I know Aurelia's level 1 and level 2 is just insanely strong, and is way better than Fizz's. And so, I'm effectively treating this the same way I do a ranged matchup. 
can see the push, minimize damage I take while looking to get what CS I can, and then I'll look to play more aggressive off the rebound. And so, as you can see, the rebound is now occurring. The main difference here is that unlike ranged matchups where you can just get them low and burst them, often other melees you're facing can actually just burst you back. All that means is you have to be a bit more careful about when you trade, as you need to either go even or win the trade. You can't take losing trades like you can against ranged champions. So that poses the question, how do you take winning trades? Well, you're looking to time your aggression off cooldowns and level advantages during the rebound. Here, we can see Aurelia use her E, and I spike level 4. I move forward to land Q, but she backs out of range, and so I just get last hits. Now, you're probably wondering why I don't just position much more forward. Well, you see, I'm trying to bait Aurelia into thinking she's more safe than she is, so that way I can time my aggression off her last hits. And you can see, it should have worked, she actually queued this minion, and I'm still level 4 to her level 3. On top of that, she didn't even get the kill on the minion, so she never got her Q reset. So I should be queuing in here as Fizz and going for an aggressive trade. But as mentioned at the start of the guide, I'm relearning mid lane, and so I made a mistake. I'm missing out on a massive lane winning trade. One thing I do want to highlight about melee versus melee matchups though is that off this rebound, I'm really just trying to land harass and trade off her last hits while staying in my own big wave to give me the damage advantage if she tries to trade into me. For example, I see her go for a last hit and so land W harass. She then puts her W on cooldown. Great, now I know I want to trade aggressively off this cooldown window, which I do and win the trade because of it. I then back off for my own cooldowns to come back up, and I'm able to dodge her E. Now both her E and W are on cooldown, so I will want to land a burst trade again. You can see how just by timing trades off last hits on the rebound, you can often bait abilities, and now I'm already ahead in health and setting her up to be in my kill threshold. With her having max stacks of her passive and my E being on cooldown, she for whatever reason mistakenly thinks she can beat me 1v1 in an all in, but I have 3 casters and a siege minion focusing her along with being a level up, this is all thanks to the rebound. So I ignite, go for the all-in, but unfortunately am not able to get the flash auto attack off in time. Again, a little bit rusty. Still, you can see how, with me making mistakes, I'm not perfect here, I still won my lane off the exact same strategy and concepts. That's how powerful it is. As this wave crashes, it really is now in lane in a losing position. This is because as we taught you before, we now either tower dive Aurelia, even if we trade deaths, it's okay, as she'll lose this huge wave if she dies. Or if Aurelia recalls, we can match her recall while she loses that huge wave to the tower. And even if she stays and we decide we can't kill her, well, we still can recall off that crash, getting a recall advantage on her. In this specific scenario, my plan was to recall, as I knew Aurelia had all her abilities back up, and I felt she was too high in health, and so a dive was too risky when I had a free advantage off the recall timing. The enemy jungler actually ends up ganking me here, and I'm able to get out, but now I have a really late recall timing. Because of this, you'll see how I'm not able to get back in lane in time to pick up the wave, however, the wave is now rebounding back once again, and so the even minion rule is in effect. It's pushing to Aurelia. So I want you to pause and think, what timing window will I have over Aurelia now that it's rebounding back to her? Remember, rebounds result in you having minion advantages, which means you'll be ahead in experience. Because of this, I'm able to hit the level 6 timing first and get an all-in off of it. And because it's a rebound, it means I can easily finish pushing this wave into her tower, resulting in her falling even further behind as the minions will die to the turret. Alright, so I know a lot of you guys are now thinking, okay, I get it, the strategy is super powerful, but what exactly are these players supposed to do against it? And the answer is actually incredibly simple and easy. You just play safe, and let yourself be zoned while waiting for the wave to crash on your tower. For example, as I get back to lane, I can see the wave is rebounding back to me. This means Aurelia will have the minion advantage and hit level 6, and have ult advantage off that as mine is on cooldown. If I was playing a ranged champion in this position, I'd just be sitting all the way back outside of Aurelia's range, and just look to last hit or harass using abilities that outrange her. However, in this case, as long as I hold my escape abilities, which are Q and E as Fizz, I can kind of hold my ground, I'm just waiting to jump away if Aurelia engages. This would be very similar to a Zed holding his W in this position. Then, once the wave is outside my tower, now I can look for an aggressive trade since I can jump back to the safety of my tower without Aurelia being able to trade back. Again, very similar concept if I was a ranged champion, I'd just be landing harass from range under the safety of my tower during this time. Now, the wave is finally rebounding back to Aurelia, and so it's our turn to play aggressive. I just slow push though, I'm waiting to time my aggression off Aurelia's last hits. And if you look at my XP bar, you'll see I'm going to hit level 8 off the next few minions. This would set me up to have a 2 level lead off this rebound, letting me win pretty much any trade. So usually I would just go aggressive on Aurelia right here, but the enemy jungler is looking to gank me and so I'm waiting for my jungler to counter gank. Obviously with my level lead and item lead, this is an easily 1-2v2. 
However, notice how afterwards, I just go back to the same strategy of slow pushing, looking for trades on the enemy Aurelia when she goes for last hits. And since I'm kind of baiting her with these last hits, she actually ends up moving in range, and so I'm able to land a quick burst trade. Again, same position now. We know we can either take the recall timing or tower dive. In this case, she's within my kill threshold, and so we're planning to dive off the wave crashing. And theory is great and all, but in solo queue, chaos happens and you have to adjust. A fight breaks out in the nearby river, and with my push lead, I can not only react to it first, but it also sets me up to easily clean up Aurelia due to her getting low when we landed those trades. And it's actually quite simple how I won my lane. I just know how to play safe during the enemy's rebounds and play aggressive during mine. At the start of the lane, I play safe and let the wave crash. Aurelia should then be playing safe as it rebounds back to her, but she doesn't, and so I punish her for it. Next rebound, I again have the advantage here, and Aurelia doesn't play safe, and so gets punished. Afterwards, it's Aurelia's rebound, so now I have to play safe, waiting for it to crash. Then, when it's my rebound, Aurelia again positions way too aggressive, and so gets caught in a losing trade. Here's the thing though, for ranged champions, the snowball is way worse. If you fall victim to that level 3 rebound, your lane is now completely over. For example, let's see what happens after I got that solo kill on Ryze at level 3. What you'll notice is that I can position extremely aggressively, threatening trades if he tries to last hit with his auto attacks. This results in him getting zoned and only able to last hit minions with his abilities from range. Then, once the melee champion gets level 6, well, it's often hopeless for the range champion as they don't even get to last hit with their abilities. It's the exact same outcome in the Annie game, and keep in mind, we didn't even get the kill on Annie. We just forced her to take a bad recall timing and lose the wave to the tower. Now the snowball consists of the same dance of just sitting right at the minions she needs to last it and threatening to go aggressive if she moves up to CS. Even without a jungle gank, she would be completely screwed here as she'd be within my kill threshold and I could just dive her on the crash as we taught before. And I want to fast forward here to show you just how long she's being zoned from last hits and how it eventually results in her having to take a bad recall timing where she loses the minions to her tower once again. And this process just repeats as soon as we're back in lane with her being zoned. And the best part of this is even if the enemy plays super safe and they let themselves be zoned so they're healthy enough to avoid being tower dove on your crash, well, you can just roam off the crash then, winning the rest of the map with your ganks. Essentially, 80% of your matchups will be against melee champions as a mid laner. And this one mistake we just went over is nearly impossible to actually come back from, especially if you play a ranged champion. Once I realized that nearly every player I ran into during my climb was making this mistake, well, it became clear that this is the most important lesson for you to learn. If you're someone who plays melee mid laners, well, you're welcome, use what you've learned in this guide, and you'll be winning your lane significantly more often. But if you're someone who plays ranged mid laners, then yes, it's as simple as playing safe during the rebound. Position so you don't allow trades and instead focus on landing harass from range. In many ways, this mistake is just a simple knowledge check, that when you fail, you lose lane regardless of what else you know. And by the way, this kind of knowledge check doesn't only exist for the range champion against melees. The melee champion actually has pretty much the same knowledge check at level 1. For example, here's a skill cap challenger expert, Shori, playing Lux against Fizz in Gold Elo. By the way, we upload 10 new smurf commentaries every week to our website where a challenger player shows you how to carry out of the ranks you're stuck in, in case you didn't know. So, you know how I made it look super simple to just sit back the first few waves and then play off the rebound as Fizz? Well, look what happens when you don't know this. This Fizz is trying to fight against the push, positioning aggressively and going for last hits he should be giving up. This results in him taking an absolutely insane amount of damage at level 1 and actually having to flash. So now he's totally screwed. He's literally already lost his lane as he's out of sustain, low on health, and has no way to go aggressive off the rebound at level 3. If we fast forward this, you can see how Fizz is just pinned down, unable to react to any play, can't even last it, and is forced to take a bad recall timing and lose a huge amount of minions to the tower. You can actually see Lux has 31 CS to Fizz's 6. That's nearly 2 kills worth of a gold advantage in the first 4 minutes of the game. Alright, that wraps it up. You now know the most important lesson I learned climbing from unranked to diamond in 30 days as a mid laner. For everything else, there's skillcapped.com. With premium courses for every role and skill taught by the best players, Skillcapped is the perfect platform to help take your game to the next level. Our service is completely risk free to try as you're kept safe with rank up insurance. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. All right, and that does it for this one. We here at Skillcapped want to thank you for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.